I'm Chantelle, and this is WIBCO Radio, and I'm here with Sons, um, and they're going to be playing at Cafe Nine tonight. Um, so yeah, so you you guys just was you were in Asia, um, you were in, in Hong Kong and Taiwan. So how was that experience? Like how receptive were people to your music? Extremely, yeah, extremely receptive. Uh, yeah, it was it's a weird experience to be like uh, an Americaner in Taiwan. It's I don't know. You're just I don't know. You're you're very. I think you're a very special guest to them. Mm -hmm. And I almost feel like it wouldn't have mattered at all what we did musically. Right. <laughs> like they were just flipping out, and they were like happy to meet us, and it was really insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was it was our first time to, in Asia anyway, mm -hmm. just ever. So couple that with kind of playing shows to a lot of people in this totally strange land. Right. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was really overwhelming and. It's such a long flight, and you're kind of tired, and you don't, you know, like things are just like not really making sense. So it's, it's very dreamlike the whole time. It was like a dream. Yeah, we weren't there too long, so it was just kind of like. I don't really remember anything specific. About it. <laughs> yeah. It was just like a smell or a feeling, you know. Yeah. Right. yeah. But it was great. It was really cool. Good yeah. smell. Yeah. Most of the time. Most so I, I just want to like correct myself. The the name of your band is Seems. Nice catch. Yeah, we, well, it can be both, but uh, we have lately been saying soon. We've been doubling down on soon. Yeah. Right, right. We mess with people, I guess. So. <laughs> Next <laughs> album, who knows how it's going to be. Um, so yeah, like you said, Asia is like a really like, insane place. Um, so it was like the most memorable moment or like craziest moment from that trip. Um, I think that we had each had our own kind of experience because we were kind of a, on our own during the days, you know. Mm -hmm. We've been on tour all summer, so we don't really hang out a lot during the day sometimes. <laughs> any but, uh, any chance we can get to have a Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think the, you know, like anywhere, food is very, was remarkably good. And, um, and plentiful. Yeah, we mm -hmm. ate so much. We had really good guides there. and uh, You know, it's not... The thing that was like remarkable to me was that I wasn't I wasn't totally out of my element. I felt very comfortable the whole time. I wasn't I just didn't know what to expect because I'd never been anywhere like that. So uh, it, it was just really great. And it was just like really gracious hosts. You were hosting so well. I was really impressed by the hospitality. Yeah, and even though you know it's so kind of different to North America, it's not really. It's no, not it's really. actually not. That yeah. It's, I thought I was I was gonna be completely turned on my head and I was relatively comfortable. Yeah, we're just I mean like, you stick out a little just because of the way you look, but like other than that I was pretty comfortable. Right, right. Yeah, good deals on t shirts too. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's really important when you're, when you're traveling. Or cheap t shirts. <laughs> right. Um, so your second album, Image du Futur, came out um, earlier this year, and it's super experimental. And you know, I was as I was listening to it, I was kind of wondering what's the intent behind your sound, and like what are the biggest influences behind your music. Uh, I think we're influenced by a lot of different stuff, but um, I, you know, the intent was just to make a real kind of more cohesive album, I think. Um, we didn't, re I don't know, it was, it's kind of weird because it, there, there's not really an intent there. It's just right. like we, we kind of just made this album and like wrote and arranged it and recorded it kind of a short span of time compared to our first record. So I think it just kind of sounds more cohesive based on that. But I mean, I think the songs are just as diverse as on the first record. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't like a huge intent. It was just like the intent really is just to make like the best record. So we usually record a lot of songs or more songs, and then kind of just whittle them down. It's like pretty basic and kind of boring in a way, like as, in terms of process. But it's hard to say. Yeah. It's it's hard to talk about like having a literal intent. But I think that the knowledge that we were coming out as somewhat recognized then, like now that we had some fans who were following us, probably informed our efforts on the second one, and and maybe inspired us, to, like Joseph, to make it a little more cohesive, more of like, 
an entire entity. And in that, I think in that respect, I actually, uh, in my opinion, this our album, our, our second record is less experimental than the first because right. I think there was more of an eye towards making an entire product. You know? mm -hmm. And so maybe a little less diverse. Yeah, and we're just kind of more comfortable with our, like our music and like we, we kind of know what we want to do more. Mm -hmm. um, We've been playing together a lot. We like trust each other more. Like we have more yeah. like sensibilities are more in sync now. You know? Yeah, yeah. No, we just try to. We used to just try to mimic our live sound. Really, you know. I think on this record it was less of that. Right. But we usually don't, you know, overplay either on records, like because we want to be able to play it live. So we don't add a lot of stuff that we wouldn't normally do. I don't know. I don't know. Does that answer? Great. Oh, that was a great answer. <laughs> um, so, like, where do you see your music sort of going in the future? Is it going to change drastically? Uh, or, um, I doubt it. No, oh, yeah. I doubt it. It's funny, though, like, I think the thing that I like myself, what I like about playing this band, is that mm -hmm. I, I have an easy time imagining it with different kinds of influences. Like, Whenever I listen to whatever style of music, I can sort of see it fitting into the scenes world a little bit, because I think, because I think we've evolved our sound on such an eclectic set of influences in the first place. You can sort of throw a lot of things against it, and it works. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, maybe it'll be a little more. It, it might be unpredictable. You don't know how yeah. it's going to come out. Right. But uh, then again, we're still the same four guys, and you know. And I, I think when, when we were making the second record, I was a little worried that we weren't going to be able to achieve like the sound that we had in the first. Mm -hmm. But it's just some sort of law of interpersonal chemistry that you end up sounding like yourself. So, you know, no matter how we try to change, probably we'll end up sounding more or less like you know. Yeah, I think Which we're all kind of comforting. excited to make new music at this point because we've been playing a lot of shows this year. And yeah, I, don't know, I think I'm just, I'm looking forward to it. Now we're even more comfortable with that sort of process, and yeah, I think we're just going deeper, and it's going to be probably just weirder. Like the commercial aspect to our band doesn't really work. Like we're not trying to, you know, blow up on the radio or anything. So that's not going to happen. Yeah, it'll never happen, and that's not people don't want it to happen, obviously. So yeah, I think it'll. I just think it'll be heavier in all aspects. You know, we're Awesome. <laughs> um, so you guys hail from Montreal, um, and I know that city has such a rich history of like music. Yeah. Um, so what would you say are like the defining characteristics of the music scene in Montreal right now? Mm. Huh? Right now, uh, Grimes. <laughs> Just <laughs> Grimes. That, that characteristic, <laughs> yeah. the Grimesy aspect. No, it's really cool. I, like. You know, you never I, see Grams or like hanging out in the cafe though. Nope. Um, but she's kind of big. No? She is very big. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which is awesome, and she should be. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just cool to see like stuff like that, like really people doing their own thing, and then sort of getting recognized or doing well based on just sticking to what they do, not yeah. sort of compromising. Mm -hmm. I think that is a defining characteristic. At least for Montreal, I wouldn't know about other places because I've never lived anywhere else, so right. can't, I'm sure it's probably similar. I do places. think Montreal has like an unusually high percentage of bands that get popular while being totally uncompromising. You know, I think uh, there's a certain strength of that scene. I don't know why that is, but it just like you get lots of people who just get really good at being really weird. And well, like, it's because you have to play a lot of shows in Montreal and. When you play a lot of shows there, mostly it's like other musicians who are your friends will come and see you, and you know you kind of want to impress them. You know, if you're not impressing those people, then you don't have a shot at impressing other people elsewhere. You know, so it's kind of like you kind of have to cut your teeth a lot, a little bit. Um, well, we did, we certainly did for many years, just like playing in Montreal, just trying to like one up other bands, or you know, but in a friendly way. But and I think that helps, like. Having a lot of a concentration of really good musicians in the city it really helps to sort of hone in on what you want to do or just get better as a band. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Lots of lots of interplay between the avant-garde scene and the like pop 
laptops and whatever. Yeah, and electro, so I think that there's a lot of electronic music too, which is awesome. That sort of maybe might account for lots of these sort of black sheep coming out of Montreal, you know? Right. Like sort of weird bands, mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I mean, some of us have a history of playing like free jazz music, so... Mm -hmm. But then you get involved in the indie rock scene somehow, and there's just a lot of crossover there. Right. Yeah. So how has the city, that culture, sort of influenced your music? Uh, I th well, I, you know, I don't know if it's like a culture thing, but mm -hmm. if it is, it's probably subconscious because there's a lot of French and English in Montreal, so there's just so much stuff happening, not only in music, but like art and just in life. Like, people just do kind of what they cook, like, people move to Montreal to pursue crazy ideas, crazy yeah. dreams, like, right. not only in, like, ask, music, like, what kind like, of job you have, they're like, yeah, they're yeah. like, what are you doing, like, what are you working on, like, yeah. no one has a job, it's like, it's it's just like, but uh, even if you want a job, like, if you want an interesting one, you, you can move to Montreal and try to pursue that, because it's kind of cheap to live, and you have a lot of leeway that way, like, you don't have to work six days a week to be, you know, to pay None rent. My friends have a job, it's crazy, I go home and everyone's just <laughs> hanging out all day. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> it's crazy. But then they're also doing like somehow being insanely productive, making crazy shit. Like that. So I don't know. Yeah, it's, like, it's kind of a mystery. I mean, you know, and I think like we're also maybe influenced by that that sort of friendly competition. That, you know, it is because, especially for an anglophone, like mm -hmm. an English speaker, mm -hmm. and you're on like the anglophone scene, it's so small, and so then you kind of get a bit of like tension. You know, like there's like. Lots of like uh, one other shit that goes on in like a totally cool way. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. but that's in the air, you know. You go to some show and you're like, that was really amazing. So you start working on your shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't you can't phone in a show like and expect people to come back. You know? right. Yeah. Right, right. Um, so when you're out on tour in far, far away places like Asia, um, what do you wit like miss the most about Montreal? Like, what do you wish you could bring with you? Hanging all day. I don't know. Uh, it's hard to complain when you're like on tour in Europe and Asia and stuff. Like, you know, it's it's really good to live in Montreal, but it's like anywhere. It's great to be away. So I don't know. I, I think we love being on tour. Like we tour so much, and a because we like it and we need to do that. But it also just makes going back home more better. Like it's kind of like two yeah. different worlds. Like when I'm on tour, I don't. Really yeah, I don't. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. sort of like it's a whole different lifestyle. Because being on tour is it's not an activity; it's a lifestyle. It's like a culture. So you're like you're going everywhere, but in like in some sense, you're sort of in this like village of being on tour, you know, with other bands that are in that culture, mm -hmm. and and so it's like you're living somewhere else, and, and it's not like and where you're living is in a van. You know, like, you live in yeah. a van. So maybe I miss my. Yeah. That's a pretty good answer. Yeah, I kind of missed his normal That's not really place. specific to Montreal, though. I could be anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, yeah. Mm -hmm. You got a nice mattress. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if you can tour with any band, any musician, um, who would it be? Prince. Prince? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> why not? Before she even really finished the question. Yeah. That's my answer. That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. We'd never do that. That'll never happen. Well, I don't know how fun it'd be, actually. You'd probably just, you'd never even meet him. You'd never see Prince. No. Alright, scratch Prince, he's out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who else? Is there other? I don't think there's people? anyone else. <laughs> really? Yeah, music these days. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I mean... Craftwork? Uh, yeah, that'd, that'd be, be cool. pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know though, like what's gonna be a good tour. We're not really answering your questions very directly, sorry. But yeah. like, I don't know. We're like we like touring with our friends and like. Yeah, it's kind of like it's all about the hang. It's all about the experience. Bit. Yeah. So who knows? Cool. Like, there's some bands that are really cool. Uh, we've toured with some bands that are really good bands, but like it wasn't really a great tour for us. And yeah. some bands who like, well, are also great bands, but they're more homies. So then it just everything, the whole process is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, thank you, Liam and Bob. Um, this has been a great interview. Thank you. And thanks. I hope your your show goes really well tonight. All right. Thanks Looking a lot. Looking forward to it. All right. Um, so yeah, this has been Chantel with WIBCO Radio, and this is Soon. <laughs>